Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Through my new blue light glasses from Barner. I really just wanted an excuse to wear them because I thought they looked cool. It, this video isn't actually sponsored by them, but it is sponsored by Squarespace. Very excited about today's video. We're talking about a camera I truly didn't know was coming. I didn't know how deeply I wanted it. Sony just keeps throwing these out at us and I, I just keep getting more and more confused with every camera that comes out. Today, embargo release day, I have the camera for you. I thought we'd do a little unboxing, a little first look. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the camera in the actual packaging, so if that makes it a little less of an unboxing for you, I'm truly sorry, but not that sorry. Let me get it! This, my friends, is the Sony FX3. Look at it. Oh, small? Why, yes it is. Okay, this actually doesn't come <laughs> with the camera when you buy it, but here it is. It's the ECM XM1. This would be the shotgun mic that you would buy in order to go along with this kit. So this is half handle and half XLR inputs. So this would be the exact same system as the K3M. This is designed so that you can literally just slide it on top of the camera, super convenient. This is exactly what we use here at the office. So the fact that you can buy this all in one kit is super convenient for me. Let's go over the high level specs of this guy, okay? In this beautiful, compact body we have the exact same sensor as the fx6 it's got 10.2 megapixels full frame so it's going to be fantastic in low light it's got 15 stops of dynamic range as well so far it's sounding a lot like the fx6 internally inside it is the same camera but the difference is the body and the form factor. It shoots 120p 4K and up to 240p in full HD. It's got five axis in-body stabilization and it shoots 10-bit 422 all in camera and it's got 16-bit raw output. It takes Z batteries, which is awesome for me because I have my A7C, I have my A7S3 and I'm not running out to the store to get a bunch of different types of batteries over here. It shoots as Cinetone, the S logs. I am very excited about Cinetone. So there's actually a fair amount to talk about when it comes to the body of this camera. The first thing you'll notice is it doesn't have a viewfinder, but that's not really a big concern because this is a cinema camera. You're shooting video with this, not stills, but it does have a full flippy screen. The buttons are super tactile on this. We noticed that especially on top, they're a little bit more raised. So they're very easy to find, easy to push. It is optimized for right hand control. <laughs> and that basically means that if you're left-handed like Chris, this doesn't really work. And I know what you're thinking, Lizzie, what cameras are left hand optimized? Well, none, but it does feel really good in your right hand. And that's what I'm trying to get across here. You can actually see that this forms to your palm really, really nicely. So when you're using the D-pad, which is on top, you can actually use it with your thumb still. It's a little hard to use it with your pointer finger, but I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose. So you can easily hit the record button, you can easily use the D-pad, and you can hit these programmable buttons if you want really easily. So I did call them programmable buttons, they are, but they are actually named for your convenience and come already set up with their own settings. So what I mean by that is number one up here is already labeled iris, number two is labeled white balance, number three is labeled ISO. So that's really nice. You don't necessarily have to remember what each of those buttons do if you want to keep them set up the way that they come. It might only get a little confusing for you if you want to change the way that they're set up in the future. One more thing I want to say about the D-pad. It is a little bit weird to now have it on the top for me personally, but I do think it's something I could get used to. If you're shooting low, for example, this becomes really intuitive to access with your thumb. Same thing if the camera was on a tripod, you would have that pressure of it resting on the tripod to go ahead and use your pointer finger or your thumb, whatever makes sense to you. So I would really have to shoot with this more to give you a full well-rounded opinion on whether I like the position of the D-pad or not. So if you didn't already notice. You enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean 
and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. There are five quarter inch thread holes all over this camera and that's because it's designed to go cage free. When they were designing this body, they really wanted it to be something portable, something lightweight, something you're not afraid to necessarily go ahead and suction onto the front of a car, but it's gonna have that cinema quality. You're meant to shoot with this completely handheld. You're not meant to add a cage so that it can be light, it can be easy to use, rugged, portable, etc., etc. Right here on the front, we've got the digital zoom, which is a cool feature for me because it's not something I have on any of my existing cameras and last but not least probably my favorite feature is that when you hit the record button on top it lights up in several different places around the record button on the side up here so if you're shooting facing forward or shooting yourself then you can still see that it's recording and on the back it's got a big old light right here. And I mean, this is a feature you can turn on and off, but on the screen itself, you've got uh, that red frame to tell you that you're recording. So there's physically no way that you can miss a shot now. Let's talk about audio for a quick second. So when you pick up the FX3, you're going to get this guy. And this is the exact same setup of XLR inputs that you get with the K3M. The only thing that it doesn't come with is this ECM XM1 shotgun microphone. Why don't I assemble it? It still feels pretty lightweight. I mean, it doesn't have a lens on it yet, but this acts as a handle if you're shooting really low. It's still super small for a cinema camera. The fun part, and the question you've been asking yourself throughout this entire video, who is this camera for? In my opinion, it's for two different types of people. On the one hand, it's for someone who wants to move into a cinema camera world. This is the perfect way to kind of inch yourself over that line, invest in a true cinema camera, because internally it is the same as an FX6. And the cool part is that they made it in a way that you could essentially build out your own FX6 if you want and add on the XLR inputs. You'll have your own NDs, but that's what everyone in the end loves about an FX6 is that all of that stuff is built into a camera. But on the other hand, it makes it really big. That's why this camera could be great for someone who travels a lot, who's very run and gun, who doesn't necessarily want to drag around an FX6 everywhere they go. This is small, this is built to be handheld. Like I said before, it doesn't need a cage. You can strap this to the hood of a car, hang it from a tree. So it might be for that cinematographer, that cinema camera user who just wants something a little smaller and a little more run and gun. In my opinion, this is similar to what Sony did with the a7 III and the a7C. They essentially took the a7 III, got rid of a bunch of the bells and whistles, buttons, D-pad, things like that on the body of the camera and packaged all of that good stuff inside into a smaller frame in the a7c and although this is a little bit different you can add on some of those things like the xlrs that you would get in the fx6 it, it's kind of a similar effect. It's a little bit of a lower price point and it's build your own. You can customize this camera depending on what your needs are as a cinematographer. This is gonna run you for $3,899 USD. It should be shipping out in early March. And I thought it would be fun if we shot a little outro on this guy. So why don't we cut to that right now? Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please feel free to give it a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell if you'd like to be notified for all future videos on this channel. And I will see you in the next one. Visual zoom. <laughs>